All right, so today on our third day of class, if you've been uh, keeping track of the syllabus, we've got several things we're going to talk about and a couple of things that I forgot to put in here that we should have time for also. Uh, and so the big ideas that I've got on the syllabus is that we're going to be uh, talking about plugins and uh, what I missed putting in here was widgets. Uh, but that's what's in store for today. And so in order for us to do what I want to do, we need to bring back our site from last week. I don't want to start over. I don't want to go back again with a completely empty blank site uh, on, uh, on WordPress. I, are you enrolling in the class or are you signing in? Sign in. That's not the sign in. The sign in is, is the pink one. Um, the, uh, the thing is that I don't want to start over again. I want to bring back my site from last week. And so that's what we're going to do together. Uh, I already turned off the printer, but you should have a copy of sheet number four. Uh, let me remind you where the where the instructions are at. Remember, everything that I talk about, I should have them. All, I should have all the instructions on a sheet for you, so that there's no confusion. You should have your computer on, and you want to go to our desktop on the top left. You'll see the computer window. Double click computer at the top left. Double click computer, then you will see network location drive Z. Here's our network folder. Whenever I give things to you, they'll be in that folder. Classroom data drive Z. Double click on that. You'll see a variety of folders. Scroll down alphabetically to Campos, C A M P O S, Ecom 1. Double-click that folder. What you then want to do is, um, you've got here a few things. All the instructions that I've been talking about, and uh, we're going to look at number four. So you want to drag a copy of that if you don't have it already. You want to drag a copy to your desktop so that you can open it. You don't want to double click it from the folder. You want to drag it to your desktop so you get a copy of it. What you also want to do is notice there's a folder at the top with last week's date. That is a copy of my site as I left it at the end of the day. If you have your site from last week, you can use your site. If you don't, you want to use mine. Now here's the confusion about it. Uh, last week we made a copy of our site with Duplicator, and inside of my folder, notice what I've got, a zip file and an installer. If you don't have your zip file and your installer, use my file, because you don't have a complete archive. You're supposed to have, when you went through the process last week, when we went through the process last week, it created for us a zip file, this, with a huge name, .zip, and install it. Those are the two files we ended up with last time. If you don't have something exactly like that, you might as well start with my files instead of us trying to figure out what happened to your files. Question? No, that was it. I saw the zip file. Mm -hmm. So just to, just to reiterate, this folder is where we're going to start off with. You want to drag a copy of that to your desktop. So on my desktop, I've got my, zip, uh, my PDF instructions and my site from last week. Let's make sure we've all got that. Again, if you're using your site from last week, great. But it should be, like I said here, a zip file and an installer file in a folder. Does everyone have that? Does anyone need any help? Getting oriented. Yeah, I, I have a lot of files in there, but I don't. I have the zip one, but I don't have the other one. Yeah, if you don't have the other one, we might as well start with my file instead of figuring out what happened with yours. Are we can do that during the lab time, perhaps. Would those be any good for me, or should I just erase them from mine? Keep them, but wait for me during breaks or lab and such to make sure to see if it really is useful or not. All right, so. I've got a copy then on my desktop of last week's work. 
and the instructions. I'm going to open the instructions to give you an overview of what we're going to do, and then we'll do it together. So what I have on my instructions, last week we did this first part, archiving the site. We made a copy of the site, we went through these steps, and at the very end, click to download the installer and archive files. One is called installer.php and contains instructions to resurrect your site. The other might be called something something blah 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 archive.zip and contains all the media, pages, posts, database, everything of your site. Do not unzip this file. Move both files into a new folder named the date, for example. So that's what I've got in, in my network. That's what I'm having you get. If you have that on your flash drive, great. If you don't have something like that, it's better for us to start off with my files and we'll figure yours out later so we don't fall behind. But we did that last week. And that's a perfect copy of our site from last week. This process here works great also, like let's say someone built you a WordPress site and then uh, you're, you're done with them and now you're going to work on your own site. Well, remember WordPress is live. If this was on a real server, victor.com, people would see what you're doing when you make changes. When you make mistakes, they would see it also. So if instead you work on your website in WAMP on your personal computer, people won't see that. They won't see your mistakes. They won't see you making changes. They won't see you stumbling uh, until you're ready to then uh, put it online, live. And this is the part of putting it online, in theory. We're still going to stay on our local computer, localhost. We're still going to use WAMP server on our computer. But if you, if you think outside the box, this works on a live server, downloading it to your personal computer, editing it, and then update, uploading it again back to the live server. That's going to be a little advanced, and everyone is going to range. If you've got GoDaddy, Bluehost, host monster, Yahoo server, whatever. You, all of these different things, it really, really varies. So if you need individual help, that's what our lab time is for. In theory, this is what we're going to do, and we're going to do it with our WAMP server. We're going to do specifically this second part right here, uh, resurrecting the site. We're going to bring our site back to life based on our project from last week. So let me give you an overview here, then, then we'll do it. We're going to log into phemyadmin to create a database. Notice that doesn't tell you exactly what to do because that's on a previous instruction. We've done it together twice before. We'll do it again today. But we need to create an empty database. We then need to uh, have a folder in our WAMP WW folder for our project, which would be that folder in this case of last week's work. In, your, in our web browser, we will go, oops, that's a mistake here, local shot, it should be localhost, localhost, slash new site, slash installer. A little note here on 5A, the thing about giving people instructions is that sometimes people are very literal, which is good, and sometimes people are not literal, which is also good. What I mean by that is, this is literally saying, visit your web browser and type this. But... Our current project might not be called New Site. Our current project, in my case, is called 2015-1109. So this is the thing about giving instructions. Obviously, if in my instructions here I wrote 2015-1109, it's not always going to be 2015-1109. Eventually, it's going to be 2015-1201. So make a note that this is not literally always what you write. The concept here is you need a folder in your www folder, which I mentioned here, in your folder of www, you should have a folder for, for example, new site. Then the address would be localhost slash new site slash installer. We'll see that firsthand in just a moment. But when we visit this address together in a moment, it will then ask us for our server path, password, etc so that we can bring our site back to life. It's relatively straightforward. The server path, password, and login also is not mentioned here because it's mentioned on a previous instruction. 
And again, if I literally said, make sure you put admin and password, but then your particular account is not admin and password, so you have to think one step ahead where sometimes you, you, don't, you don't do everything literally because it depends on your setup. We're going to go through this together. It should succeed. It will bring your site back to life. We will do the steps recommended. We'll log in. And then we'll be at the point where we ended up last time. Again, in the grand scheme of it all, this class, part one and part two, there's this extra step of running WAMP server and setting up our site, which usually you don't need to do on a real server. When we talk about Bluehost, GoDaddy, HostMonster, HostGator, etc., when we talk about these real companies where you buy your own domain, you don't have to do some of this. This is it's automated, but that assumes you have an account with those providers, and those providers are not free. So that's why we're using WAMP server, which is totally free but it does require a little bit of technical setup. So the first thing we'll do then is we need to start our WAMP server. So I forgot, how do I turn on WAMP server? That's right, let's double click WAMP server on our desktop. Remember, you don't get a big pop-up that says, Welcome to WAMP Server. You want to keep an eye out on the bottom right corner for a little red W, then it should become green. Does everyone get a green W on the bottom right corner? So our WAMP Server is running. That means now let's open our web browser, anyone you'd like. Um, with Firefox, let's say. So go ahead and open your web browser. And we're going to go to the WAMP server, uh, the WAMP server localhost page, which is what's our address for that? You, you're both right. I would recommend HTTP colon slash slash localhost because some web browsers, when they see localhost, they'll take you to the right place. Some will see localhost and say, "What's that?" and give you a Google search. To be sure that you're going to where we want to, if you add the HTTP colon slash slash part, that should always tell the web browser, go to this address, not search for this address. Depends on the web browser. I know Chrome sometimes gets confused. You just type localhost and it gives you a Google search. Worthless. We need to go directly to our localhost address. So go ahead and go to HTTP colon slash slash localhost. Next, we need to go over to that one screen where we create a database. What address is that? Or how do we get there? What's that? Say that again. Yes. At the end of the address, we'll add slash php my admin. Press enter. So we've done this at least twice before. This should, this should not be totally alien. Um, so we're on localhost slash php my admin, lowercase no spaces. Here we are here. Okay, a big scary screen. How do we create a database? There's a button at the top where we click on databases. Good. Next, what's next? Name, Name the database. There's a little box right there under Create Database, Database Name. Type there. We can make up a database of any name. So we've been using one called WordPress because our site is a WordPress site. This can be anything we want. And I would recommend no spaces, no capital letters. Don't forget to click create. And then you get the yellow pop-up that confirms you've got a database. Make sure you spell database, uh, make sure you spell WordPress correctly. Notice also you will see 
On the left side, you've got a new database called WordPress. And on the bottom here, it'll tell you you've got a total of five databases. WordPress. Does everyone have the WordPress database created? So that was instruction one and two. Log into PHP My Admin, create a database. Notice I didn't tell you exactly what to click on. Those were on previous instructions. And you should you, this should be familiar now. Now again here, I'm saying create a new folder in your WAMP WW folder. Um, but if you copied onto your desktop the folder called 2015-1109, last week's work, that will suffice. Because that folder has the, the archive files of my site. That's the point. The point of my instruction over here is you need a folder in your www folder and in that folder you need to have installer.php and the zip file inside. So let's minimize everything and let's go back up to computer. Open computer window at the top left. On a previous instruction remind me where do we find the WAMP folder on your computer from this window? Hmm? Local disk, yes. Go ahead and double click local disk. Local disk C. And then it's alphabetical and you'll see WAMP at the bottom. that. What's next? Yes. This www folder, this is where you put a website. Sometimes people make the mistake that, okay, I opened the WAMP folder, I'm going to drop my website in there. No. Any website that WAMP will see should be in the www folder. So double click the www folder. These files here represent what we saw back on localhost. This stuff that when we go to localhost in the web browser, it's this stuff here. So on my desktop, I've got last week's folder. Drag the folder from your desktop into the www folder. I'm just going to drag that inside. And to confirm at the top, I'm in computer, local disk, WAMP, www, and I put my folder from last week in there. Did everyone get last week's folder into WAMP? That was basically three and four. Back to the web browser. Back on the web browser. In your browser, access the installer.php file. For example, http colon localhost slash new site slash installer.php. Okay, so up on our address here http colon slash slash localhost again sorry I forgot to double check it it's local host not local shot that's what happens when you follow the instructions exactly instead of thinking it, thinking it through localhost slash what's next what's the rest of my address then you'll go down to your projects that's too easy what's what's the what's the address Two thousand fifteen. Two thousand fifteen. Eleven. Whatever you named it. We didn't call our folder new site, so that's why we don't type new site. It has last week's date, and then further on the instructions, then installer.php. That part is literal, 
because you do have a file called installer.php in your folder. In the 2015-1109 folder, there's an installer file. We're accessing it via the web browser here. So your address, in our case today, is this. When we come back next month, it might not be that same address. It'll probably be 2011 16. When we make a copy at the end of the day today, we'll have a copy with today's date. So when we come back, it'll be that date. But today's, today is the 9th. Today we're using the work from the 9th. So that's our address. Press enter. And if it worked, you should see the duplicator installer screen. If it didn't, raise your hand. Thank you. 
plus 10 to the 10 dash 11 dash 9 So then at the end of the address, then we'll add slash and install it back to each one. Let's see if we complete it. It's not on the dot page. Else, everyone sees this screen here. All right, let's let's check my instructions again. My instruction sheet number four. All right, so we've got we did one, two, and three, and five, uh, six. You will be asked to fill in the server path, password, login, and database name. Okay, so on our screen here. Action, create new database, connect and remove all data. This default should be fine. Technically, we've got a database ready. So by selecting create the new database, you know, technically that's different. But this should work as is. Sometimes when this doesn't work the first time, you do have to turn on connect and remove all data. If you tried to use a database and you went far ahead and something happened, but then it didn't really work, and you try to do this again, and you keep getting stuck here, sometimes it helps you to select the second option. Connect to the database and remove what's there to start over. But since we're starting from scratch, basically, this first one should be okay. I don't have it listed on my instructions, but just make a note of that. Host. Localhost. That's usually what we're dealing with. Localhost. That's what our address says up here. Localhost. Even when it's up on, a, on your own real server, oftentimes localhost still works for technical reasons, but localhost is good. Name, new or existing database name. We just created a database a little while ago called WordPress. We created a database a little while ago called WordPress. Then a user name to access that database and a password to access that database. When we were here previously, there were, we were setting this all up and there were two places where we added usernames and passwords. One 
was when we were setting up WordPress for the very first time, and one when it was asking us for an administrator password. So this is the confusing thing, and I don't have it in my notes for a purpose. You need to remember this. On one of my instructions, when we set up WordPress for the very first time, user was root, password was blank. Do you remember that? That'll be the same thing again here. This installer file needs the username and password to access that database, which is, as I said previously, is root and password. It's in one of the sheets, probably sheet number two. And this is the, this is the login information that we really only need once when we set this up. We're going to need another one after this, this step. But this is what we need at, at this step. User, root, password, nothing. Make sure it's empty. Make sure that it's saying valid database user password. It, it's empty. Click test connection. It'll try to connect to your local host database WordPress with this root and password. Success. Did anyone get fails? Let's check on that. Oh, we just didn't go misspelling. All right, so then uh, my instructions say um, you will be asked for that information. Follow the on screen instructions to begin resurrecting your archived site. So I put in that information, I put test connection, it gave me success. Next steps down at the bottom here, there's a, there's a warning and a notice, which is actually rather long. What this is saying is you're about to bring back to life a previous website. There could be a problem in that you might have an old website that will get erased. So think about it in, this, in these terms. Uh, if I was working on this website on my real server, victor.com, and then I'm putting up this copy this copy is going to erase the old version, which I usually uh, need to be careful about that. Are we still using the old version? Is this new version the most current one? Is it the most accurate one? That's why there's this warning here. It's basically saying this plugin requires some technical knowledge. Use it at your own risk. You're about to erase an existing database if it exists. In our case, we're fine because we've got a brand new empty database. So we'll say I have read all the warnings and click Run Deployment. It'll pop up one more time. Are you sure? We're about to erase a database that may or may not include a complete site. So in our case, we're okay. We're working with a brand new empty database, so we're okay. But this could be very dangerous on your real site because it'll erase a database that exists. And if that is your current site that you make money off of, and get traffic on, this could delete your site. So I'm going to click OK. And again, um, this plugin that does this, this duplicator plugin that is in action right now, I like it. It works. It's very, uh, it's very powerful. But for beginners, it might be, it might be a little technical. It might not be as full featured because there's other backup plugins that will do this automatically. It'll back itself up once a month, or once a week, or whatever, make a safe copy into your Dropbox, lots of these features. This particular plugin, pretty straightforward. It gets the job done. It's good for what my company needs, but maybe for some of you it might be, uh, it might be too technical or it might not do what you need it to do. That's why we have many plugins out there to choose from. 
many ways to accomplish the same thing. Did everyone get to a screen that looks something like this? Old settings, new settings? So imagine I was moving or copying my, my live site into my WAMP. It would say from the old settings URL, victor.com. It would recognize that it's coming from some other site and I'm putting it into my local host or vice versa. If I'm working on localhost, I've set up my site and now I want to put it live on the internet. At this point it would say URL localhost, new settings, victor.com. This is just telling you it's going from this previous location to this new location. It would be FTP when you actually copy uh, the files to the server. Remember when we dragged this 2015-1109 folder into this folder? That would be the FTP part. When you're dragging that, or when you're moving this file from your computer to your server. That's the FTP part. This part is just telling you. This is, a, this is what's going to happen. It's not actually doing it, it's just telling us. Yeah, in this case. There's some other options here. For example, um, sometimes people come into the class and they say, someone made my website and I, can, and I can log into it, but I don't know what the password is and I can't change it. What can I do? This duplicator plugin can actually help you make a copy of your site. And notice there's a step here, create a new administrator account. That way you can create a new account so that the old account uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't work anymore. You have other advanced options you don't really have to worry about. All you really need to do here is just run the update. Then we get step three. We were on step one, two, and three. Step three, very important final steps. Testing the site. There's four items here. Errors, zero, and zero. Did anyone get any? Any errors on this spot? Everyone got all green? Did anyone get any red here? So this says this we have successfully resurrected the site from last week. We need to do a few things here and then we're ready to to, to learn today's concepts. So if we had gotten any errors, there would be a link to click on that might tell you what went wrong and possibly how to fix it. The second step would be, say, permalinks. What this means is, if I was on victor.com and I was moving it over to victorswebdesign.net, we, we would need to resave our links because the links on our site might still be set to victor.com instead of victorsdesigns.net. So let's click on number two. This will ask you to log in. Since we're using my site and I was following my instructions, this is the second username and password. This one is not root and empty again. Root and empty is only when we do duplicator, when we bring our site back to connect to the database. This one now is username admin and password password. Remember that one, password with a capital P. This is what I wrote on my site last week. This is not, if you're using your site, obviously then write your username and password. We're using my site. And I created an admin account with a password of password, capital P on password. So go ahead and log in. That'll log me back into the dashboard. Remember, this is the back end the dashboard. It took us directly to settings, permalinks, permalink settings. All we need to do is just at the bottom click Save Changes. At the top, it'll say permalink structure updated.
at the top of my web browser also notice I have a tab you should have a tab called WordPress duplicator and you should see a tab that says permalink settings um, it opened a new tab you want to close the permalink settings tab to stay back on the WordPress duplicator tab that was number two there we put, we did save permalink, we opened a new tab, we put save we go back to this screen here to close that other tab and make sure you're on this WordPress duplicator tab step three validate all pages, links, images, and plugins in theory this is asking you to to go look at your your site to look at the home page to to browse your your about page to look at your products to make sure there's no broken links and images you know to test your site to make sure there's no problem depending on the complexity of the site that may that may take 1 minute or may take 100 minutes so usually this plugin does a great job uh, letting you archive and resurrect sites. So in my case, I'm going to skip this, but if this were your real site, I would test your site. And that just simply means look at every page, look at every screen, make sure the links work, and again, depending on the complexity of your site, that may be a lot of work, or it might go by quickly. We don't have time to test our whole site, we're going to assume it works, because this plugin seems to work like 98% of the time. The next item here, number four. That one's a good one. Security cleanup. Validate installer files are removed. Go ahead and click on that one. Security cleanup. You will now be redirected to the cleanup page. Fine. Click OK. This takes us back to the dashboard. It's over on the duplicator screen. Tools. What this is saying is uh, we brought our site back to life exactly as it was uh, last week. The files that allowed us to do that are still hanging around on our, on our, on our server, on our local host. Conceivably, now it's not impossible, just highly unlikely, that we could accidentally resurrect our site again like we just did. Let's say this was on our own real server, victor.com, and I did resurrect. It, I brought my site back. Then I work on my site for a month. It's highly unlikely, but let's say that then I accidentally go back to that installer.php file, and I somehow still go through steps one, two, and three. If I went through all those steps, it would take me back to what I did a month ago because that archive does not automatically update. We have to create it every time. So that's what this screen is trying to prevent. This screen is trying to prevent you to, from accidentally going back to the last time you resurrected the site. So this screen, we're going to clean up some of these files. The first one, delete reserved files. Go ahead and click that. So it's, uh, I, I don't like the way it names it, not found, this, even though it's green with a check mark. This is a, this is a good thing. It's telling you, okay, we deleted the old SQL file, the old text file, the old installer PHP file. Good. We want that to be deleted because we don't want that installer hanging around there and there might be a, the chance that we resurrect it again and lose our work. Because remember, there was that screen that said, you're about to... There, we had to turn on that check mark that said, warning, you're about to delete an old database to reinstall this site. Now that we've cleaned it up here, it shouldn't bother us. <clears throat> and I've been using this plugin and teaching this class a while. And very recently, the author of this plugin did something I don't like, and I don't see the, the logic behind this, this decision. But at this point, what used to happen it deleted all of these files and the zip file. Notice there's no mention of the zip file here. We had installer.php and that archive zip file. The archive zip file has not been deleted. 
it is recommended to remove your archive from the root yourself. This will need to be done manually. It used to do it for us back on, you know, two versions ago. I don't know why the author chose to disable that. It was very useful because if we deleted the installer file, the zip file is almost worthless. So I don't know why it deletes these, but not the zip. And the plugin used to do it. So we'll have to manually do this. And it's not in my notes here, but you should be taking notes. What I'm saying here is, we clicked delete reserved and it deleted these files except one. You need to you need to go let's do this. Let's go back to the desktop. Let's go back to computer window. Local disk. WAMP www and then 2015-1109 open the project folder and look at that there's the zip file delete it just press delete on your keyboard we're deleting the compressed zip file nothing else just the zip file again with on previous versions of that plugin, it would take care of this for us. I don't know why now we need to do it manually. I think it's annoying, and I don't really see the logic behind the author disabling that feature. So we have to go in here, delete that zip file, confirm that it's just that zip file. Yes. And that's the end of our sheet number four. At the end of the day, we will do this part again at the top, the archiving, because we're going to get some work done today. We want to save our site as a perfect copy at the end of the day. So together, we will do the first part again. We will archive the site. Then we're going to end up with a folder called 2015-11-16. When we come back, the next class time, we're going to do this again. Resurrect site. We're going to resurrect the site, change things as appropriate. We'll have a, a, we'll have a copy of our site in two weeks about what we'll end up with today at the end of the day. And again, it is a little bit of a process. It is rather technical. You probably wanted to take this class and get up and running and selling products right away. And I would like that too, but that would assume that you've all got a WordPress site on a real server, and you're paying you're paying your your provider, and you've got your WordPress installed, and you're just going to log in. But the nature of it is that we need to do this because all of these computers are public computers. Everyone doesn't have a site. You're not paying for it. I can't ask you to pay for it. I can't ask you to pay for any materials. These are free classes, so we have to do this. But this is still highly valuable skill to have because I can tell you first-hand experience in my company when we do this for clients you know we're not working on the live site where we're gonna make a mistake and everyone will see it where we'll break the site and suddenly their their shopping cart doesn't work they can't afford to lose their shopping cart ability we work on their site on a copy We work on their on on their site on our WAMP server where it's safe on our own computer and if we make any mistakes not a big deal we have a copy of it that we can work with. So in the procedures that we've just done together, any general questions? It still might be kind of a little odd to wrap your head around, but we'll do it again, and pra practice makes perfect. So any questions? I want to close that PDF. We'll do one quick thing, and then we'll take a break. Go back to your to your web browser. I've got a tab tools and a tab duplicator. We don't need duplicator anymore. We've got our site back. Close the duplicator tab. We're on our site here. We're on the back end. This is the dashboard, the control panel. Where do we go or how do we how do we look at our site like a regular user? 
How do we get to the front end? Yep, just click on the name of your site. And there's our site so far. So we're going to take a we're going to take a short break. I'll turn the printer back on in case you still want to print number four. Uh, it's one thirty. We'll be back at one forty. When we come back, we've got several things to talk about: widgets, plugins, and some other things. And then the day will be over before you know it.